Hello and welcome to The Situation Report today. Very glad to have you joining me. This is the show where we do our very best every single episode to give you the information and perspectives you need to navigate an ever-changing culture. My name is Jeremy Stonlicker. I am your host. And again, very glad to have you joining this conversation. Uh, I would encourage you, if you are not yet subscribed to the podcast, please take some time to do that right now. I typically wait till the end. And some of you may not be hearing me. So I'm going to say it right now. If you're not yet subscribed to the podcast, do it right now. Whatever podcast platform you are listening from, there's an opportunity for you to hit that subscribe button or the follow button. Do that, please, right now. That would be awesome. You can also take some time. Go to YouTube. You can find the video of this and many other episodes there. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Leave us a comment. I mentioned this uh, a couple couple episodes ago. <laughs> leave us a comment. Uh, leave us a good one. There are some people that don't like us, so leave us a good one. That would be fantastic. And uh, share this content out with others. Also, that would be super helpful. Today's episode of the podcast may be a little bit different than normal. Um, the tone will be the same. The goal is the same, providing information and perspectives. But I want to talk about something a little bit more personal. If you're a parent, I would imagine that you, like me, have looked at the world we are living in, and I'm going to assume you're well-adjusted and uh, you're secure and you're okay because you're going to make it. But you look at your kids (laughs) and you go to yourself or to your spouse, how are they going to make it? I have asked that question probably hundreds of times as I've seen what's happening in the world and I have looked at my children. It's hard to know exactly how to help them. What I do know, what I I just understand, and, and I'm sure you understand this as well, is that I won't always be around to help them make good decisions. I won't always be around to help to put whatever's going on in our world into a context that they can understand, to answer the questions that they have that may impact their lives and their children's lives. I've mentioned before on the show, I have four kids. I have a 23-year-old daughter, a 21-year-old son who's getting ready to get married. I have a 14, almost 15-year-old daughter and a 13-year-old son. And watching the world as it is and understanding what they're dealing with, in so many ways it scares me. My natural inclination then is to just put them in a protective bubble of our home, (laughs) to keep them away from everything, to keep them from uh, ever having to answer any of these hard questions or deal with these difficult times. But I know that I can't protect them from what is happening in the world. I can't certainly keep them from understanding and seeing and experiencing fear themselves. And so what I need to do while protecting them is prepare them. I need to do my very best as a father, my wife and I as a mom and dad, we need to do our very best to prepare our kids to live meaningful lives without us. Now, some of you as parents, your entire goal in life is to keep your kids with you for the rest of your lives. You want to raise them in such a way that they do need you for the rest of their lives. They can never move away if they move outside of the house. They need to move into a house that's close by. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be near your kids. I want to be close to my kids. Um, But the goal in parenting should not be to keep them with you for the rest of their lives. The goal in parenting should be to equip those kids so that they can go out and live meaningful, purposeful, productive lives of their own. But here we are. We're in what so many call unprecedented times. I have often talked about this. I've written about this. Uh, It's only unprecedented if you don't read history. (laughs) History is full of uh, what the people living through it would call unprecedented times. We've always had times where things are difficult and out of control and chaotic. I do think that with media as it is, with social media in particular, and the access to information that we all have, uh, that these unprecedented times that are not so unprecedented are being forced on us in ways that other unprecedented times were not. 
Historically, as difficult things have happened in the world, many of those difficult things were localized. Uh, issues, situations, circumstance, violence, uh, pain would take place in a local area. And unless you were in that local area, you weren't aware of it or certainly not connected to it personally. But now, if something happens on the other side of the planet, we know about it almost instantly. And we're inundated, we're flooded uh, with information that is mostly negative, but information that would communicate that we're living at that judge's 21, 25 time that the Bible describes, they did that which was right in their own eyes. The whole world, it seems, is doing that which is right in their own eyes. And because of the access we have to information and the access we have to media, <laughs> we have a front row seat. And again, as parents, if we're not careful, we can just say, I'm going to keep my kids away from everything harmful without preparing them to process, to make good decisions on their own. So that brings me to what I wanted to talk about today. There are a lot of areas that I, I want to help my kids, a lot of things that I teach my kids. But in particular, there are seven key areas of focus, seven key areas that I need to communicate well with my children. Uh, now, this has not just started as they've gotten into their early 20s and into their mid-teen years. Uh, this is a list that I've been working on since they were young, but I've really doubled down as the world seems to have flipped upside down and gotten increasingly crazy. I have doubled down on these. I want to share these with you because I believe that if we can focus on these areas, as parents, we're always trying to ask the question, understand, what should we focus on? Here, here they are. Here are some areas to focus when you're talking to your children, communicating with them, turning off the television, having a meal together, talking about what's important. Here is what you are intentionally focusing on with your kids, or you should, I'll say this, this is what I'm intentionally focusing on with my kids. Seven things. Number one, the goal is always, in all things, God and his glory. The goal is always, in all things, God and his glory. I'll pause. You may be listening to this show and you don't um, share my perspective on faith. You don't share my understanding of God and who God is and the importance of living for him. That's okay, I'm so thankful to live in a country where we can believe whatever we want to believe. Um, I support that. I'm for it. Um, but I will tell you, for me, this is my starting point. And let me explain why it's my starting point. So even if you disagree with my premise uh, that God is in and overall, uh, hopefully you'll understand my perspective on this. When I say that the goal is always in all things God and his glory, that statement and what I believe is a truth, it clears away all of the unnecessary clutter. A thousand different things that our kids can be looking at and focusing on and trying to process and trying to understand and trying to figure out. This one perspective clears out the rest. Why? Because regardless of what happens in your personal life, in your relational life, in your professional life, in the world around you, in your country, in your community, regardless of what else is going on, the goal for you personally, should always be God and his glory. It's asking the question, what would God have me to do in this situation? What most reflects who God is in this situation? We become overwhelmed with so much stuff. This one thing brings it down into one place. What would God have me to do? 1 Corinthians 10, 31, Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. If I could not teach the remaining six points that I'm going to talk about here in a second, but I could get my kids to get a hold of this one, I believe that they will process whatever happens in the world in front of them the right way. Because they'll always step back. They'll ask the question, in spite of what culture is doing, in spite of what is being normalized, what would God desire for me to do? That's the starting point. Uh, here's a second lesson that I work very diligently with my kids on. And 
I, I've been um, kind of proud of this because I've been talking about this one for a long time and talking with them, uh, hopefully in a, uh, an organic way about this. And they now talk to me about these things. Uh, number two, uh, learn history. Learn history that seems so simple, right? It seems so basic. I have been, since my kids were old enough to listen to me talk, uh, talking about history. I, I love history. I like documentaries. I like learning about the past. There's so much to be gained from that. And I've tried to help my kids understand that. They're not always as excited about sitting on the couch and watching a documentary as I am. Uh, they don't always love the lessons. But it's been a lot of fun to see my kids, as they've grown up, talk about history historical characters, what has happened in the past, uh, watching something happen now, and then my kids will get in, into an argument over when the last time this happened, or what this looked like back there, or if this has ever taken place. Learn history. Our country <laughs> of people, uh, this is not a right now generation, I think this is just broadly here in the United States, we are historically illiterate. That's why everyone keeps screaming about how unprecedented these times are, because we are historically illiterate. That's why we allow the government to overreach the way that it does, because we are historically illiterate. Uh, that's why we make some decisions with our kids that have predictable negative outcomes. We are historically illiterate. Learn history. Understand history. Uh, this goes along with read books. <laughs> we can listen to podcasts. Uh, we can listen to books now. It's great. I say now. It's been around for a long time, right? But uh, they're so accessible now. Uh, a lot of those audiobooks are free. We can watch documentaries. We can learn history. What has happened in the past? I, I am not someone who is for constantly trying to go back to the past. But we need to allow the past to serve as a guide for our future. So much in life is predictable because we have hundreds of years, if not thousands of years of evidence to help us understand what will happen in the future. That's number one. Um, but number two, there are so many great lessons that other people have learned that we could apply to our lives and our situations that would allow us to avoid many of the pitfalls that others have had to walk through. Um, a couple of verses, Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9, the thing that hath been is that which shall be, <laughs> and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. You've heard that phrase many times, there's no new thing under the sun. The first part of the verse is great. <laughs> what, is, what does Solomon say? The thing that hath been done, that's what's going to happen again. Uh, the thing which uh, shall be, is that which was. There's nothing new. It may look different. It may sound a little bit different. Technology may have advanced how quickly information can spread and how quickly trends can advance. But the things themselves, the issues themselves, they're the same. Um, a couple of episodes ago, I talked about a... a faith or Christian perspective on the media and what the media should, how we should interact with the media and how we should view it and some principles that we can use for um, understanding what's true and what's not. Uh, I, I read in that an article from, uh, I believe it was a Christian Post or, or Christianity Today. Um, go watch the episode. I, I talk about it there. Uh, but they talk about in this article um, the presidential election of 1800 <laughs> and the things that the candidates were saying about each other. Uh, they, they could have changed the date 1800 to 2020, same stuff. Um, nothing's new. Learn from history. Learn the lessons of history so that you don't have to repeat them. But also understand the, the, the timeline of history. It, it gives us a predictable outcome on what we're dealing with. Learn history. I teach this to my kids. And if they'll learn from history, they're going to be able to move forward in a good way. Number three, connected to that. Embrace your place in history. Embrace your place in history. This is something that I have personally struggled with and therefore is very important for me as a dad to communicate to my kids. Embrace your place in history. If God is all-knowing, and I believe that he is, then he knew exactly when you would be alive. 
the fact that you're alive at this moment in time was not a surprise to God. And in fact, he created you and he has equipped you to deal with this moment in time in the exact way that he desires for you to deal with it. He's created you for a purpose at a specific moment so that you can do exactly what he wanted you to do. Your timing on the timeline of history is not a surprise to God. Embrace your moment in history. Embrace it. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better, Mike Lindell with MyPillow is launching the MyPillow 2.0. When Mike invented MyPillow, it had everything you could ever want in a pillow. Now, nearly 20 years later, he discovered a new technology that makes it even better. The MyPillow 2.0 has the patented adjustable fill of the original MyPillow and now with a brand new fabric that is made with a temperature regulating thread. The MyPillow 2.0 is the softest, smoothest, and coolest pillow you'll ever own. For our exclusive listeners, the MyPillow 2.0 is buy one, get one free offer with promo code SITREP. MyPillow 2.0 temperature regulating technology is 100% made in the USA and comes with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money-back guarantee. Just go to MyPillow.com and click on the radio listener square to buy the one, get one free offer. Enter promo code SITREP or call 800-870-0283 to get your MyPillow 2.0 now. Other people have lived at other times with very difficult situations and circumstances. They needed to, if they didn't, they should have embraced their opportunity to be all that God created them to be at that moment in time. And so should you. Don't feel bad about when you live. Stop daydreaming about what it would have been like if you could have lived at another time. Learn from history, but don't desire to be there. Embrace where you are. I don't know what the future is going to hold for my kids. I don't have any idea. Uh, It's not looking good. (laughs) But I want them to embrace their moment in history so they can fully be all that they were created to be. In the Old Testament book of Esther, chapter 4 and verse 14, um, this instruction was given to Esther, who was placed in a very difficult situation. If thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, Then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place, but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? For such a time as this. God put you where you are when you're there for such a time as this. Number four, a lot of practical lessons. Uh, What do we say? Number one, uh, it's always about God. (laughs) Number two, learn from history. Number three, embrace your place in history. Number four, stay out of debt. This is an important one. Um, This is something I have not always lived up to, but I desire for my children to live up to. Stay out of debt. I am all for making money. Uh, I'm a fan of having things, (laughs) but I am not a fan of those things having me. We understand this principle that when we owe someone money, they, or the organization, the institution they represent, in a lot of ways own us. We work so we can continue to pay our debt. We work so that we can uh, fulfill an obligation that we made and in so many ways are not entirely free to do what we need to do. A lot of the pressure we feel in the modern age is a pressure we've brought on ourselves because if the economy goes the wrong direction, if a job goes sideways, if something uh, financially difficult comes into our lives, we're already right at the precipice of financial disaster because we carry so much debt that one more thing we believe will push us over. There's a lot of stress that comes with that. Help your kids understand how to live within their means, how to use cash, how to manage their finances well. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. That that mammon is money. Um, The Bible does not say anything about not having it, or you shouldn't have it, or it's evil. The love of money is at the root, is the root of evil. 
but having money, there's nothing wrong with that. Great resources that we can steward over um, for our own benefit, for the benefit of others. Nothing wrong with that. But when we start to serve it, we do everything that we can to gain it, we're in a difficult place. We can't continue to serve God with all of our hearts if we're serving the debt that we have taken on ourselves. Romans 13, 8, Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. You need the freedom to do what God has called you to do. That's number four. Number five. Again, this is very, very practical, but I think is also very, very helpful. Get and stay physically fit. <laughs> that seems like a silly one. How'd that one end up here? Um, as I teach my kids, I am very interested in the whole person. I want them to know that their goal in life is to please God. I want them to learn from the past so they can take and embrace their position in the present. I want them to be financially sound. I want them to be physically fit. Get and stay physically fit. In our family, fitness is very important. Now, we are very careful not to elevate fitness to an unhealthy level. Uh, we're not about how you look or whatever these silly metrics that people use. It's about being fit. It's about being capable. It's about your vessel, your, your body, the physical you being able to do all that God wants you to do. There are a lot of people who, because they're not taking care of their bodies, cannot fully fulfill what God has created them to do. Uh, we have got to take this seriously. It's crazy to me, and you may or may not agree with this, and that's fine. <laughs> it's crazy to me. We're living at this weird moment in time where we have so accepted everything that we're not only accepting people who are um, well out of good physical condition and physical shape, we are elevating them. <laughs> In fact, there are fitness brands that are elevating people who clearly are not taking care of themselves physically, and we are supposed to accept that as simply okay, even though heart disease and other uh, physical problems that can shorten lives or at least uh, make the quality of life much less than it should be, preventing people later on in life from being able to do what God wants them to do, taking them out of the picture of their families and their relationships earlier than they should. We have somehow concluded that that's okay. And I guess it's okay in America to do whatever you want. I want my kids to maintain physical health one more time, this is not about you need to look right or you need to fit a particular image or profile. It's about being healthy so that you can do the work that you have been called to do. Get and stay physically fit. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? You are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. What we have, if we're Christians, followers of, of Christ, it belongs to God. And we should steward over it, just like we should other resources, in a way that is pleasing to Him. Number six, learn to be self-reliant. Learn to be self-reliant. I, I am very careful to communicate to my children and to others um, that we need other people in our lives. Community is very important. Family is very important. Having other people in our lives is so important. But we also need to learn to be self-reliant, to live in such a way that we are not dependent on survival, <laughs> dependent on other people. When it comes to survival, we need to prepare for emergencies. We need to have a plan if something bad happens. We need life insurance. Uh, we should never put ourselves or our families in a place that unless someone comes to rescue us, we're not going to make it. Now, I know that that can go to a weird prepper, dig a hole in the ground and live there kind of level. I'm not talking about that either. But I am talking about being able to protect yourself, being able to provide food and water for your family for a period of time being self-reliant, being prepared, having a plan. It's amazing as well how having a plan takes a lot of pressure off because in the back of our minds, if you're a rational adult, 
uh, you know that if something bad happens, you're going to have to deal with it. It's always kind of there. And if you're prepared to deal with it, so much pressure goes away. You are learning to be, have learned to be self reliant. Again, I am not talking about focusing all of your time and effort and attention on uh, learning how to live completely off the grid. I think that's great if you can do that. Uh, some people can't. <laughs> you live in cities, work in cities, do the things that we do. Um, but, however, if there is something catastrophic that uh, comes into your world, you need to have a plan and the resources available to deal with that, at least in the short term. Learn to be self-reliant. Ephesians 5.15, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, uh, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Be understanding. Have a plan. Learn to be self-reliant. Number seven, never stop learning. This is a big one. It's very simple. Never stop learning. After that, I put find the source. <laughs> find the source. Always be learning. When you're learning, you're growing. Now, learning is different than simply consuming information that you are fed. I've talked about this even recently. I am not suggesting that you plug into a news channel 24 hours a day, you have it running in the background, it's always around you. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about simply consuming information that you're being fed. I'm talking about learning. Learning is taking in information, it's consuming information, then digesting it by uh, verifying whether or not it's true, by getting underneath the headlines, by doing your own research and coming to your own conclusions, uh, looking at every issue from different viewpoints, different perspectives, and being able to, because you've trained yourself to, think critically and come to accurate conclusions. A lot of people going through these unprecedented times, uh, in air quotes, uh, are struggling because they've never learned how to think critically. They've never learned how to continue learning when the world is spinning around them. Always be learning. Uh, read from different sources. Uh, watch different sources. When you hear something that is told to you as fact, go and figure out if it is indeed fact. Spend some time in the bibliography section of the books that you read looking at some of the original sources that the information was pulled from. Uh, it's amazing how many books can cite sources for what they're saying. And if you go to the source, what the source said was different <laughs> than what the author said. Learn. Learn, learn, always be learning, always be growing, find the source. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 18 says it this way, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. <laughs> grow in grace and in knowledge. John chapter 8 and verse 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John 8, 36, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And that starts with knowing the truth. The world is a crazy place. There's a lot of good in the world too, by the way. We focus on the bad. There's a lot of good in the world. Uh, we would probably do well to turn off the news, to spend less time consuming information, spend more time with our families. But as parents... We must understand that we won't always be al along, we won't always be present in the lives of our kids to provide the direction that they need to make good decisions. And that is presupposing they would even listen to, <laughs> to our advice as they get older. We need to take the opportunities that we have to train our children, to teach them well, so that they have the tools when they leave our home to deal with whatever life throws at them. This is something that has sat heavy on me for a long time. Even as my kids get older, I still want to communicate these seven areas to them as they deal with adult issues now instead of uh, children or teenage issues. Uh, my teenagers, they deal with what they're dealing with. I want them to continue to understand and come back to these principles. 
there is nothing that reassures me that the world is going to get simpler, less complex, more moral. I can't do anything about that, but I can make sure that those I care about are equipped to deal with it. And I uh, hope that you will be as well. Um, I, I trust that will be a help to you. This is something that's, again, personal to me. And uh, I would encourage you to take some time to think through this as well for your family. So I mentioned at the top of the show, if you have not yet subscribed to the podcast, please do that. Um, we have great guests on and talk about so many different issues, uh, really focused on navigating the world around us, getting that information, getting the perspectives we need to navigate a world that is increasingly upside down and going crazy. We want to make good decisions. How do we do that? We need the right information. So please uh, take some time to subscribe, then go over to YouTube, find our channel, The Situation Report. We have so many great episodes there uh, with great guests, great content that can really be an encouragement to you. That's our goal here, and I hope that you will take advantage of that. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching, and we look forward to talking to you next time. We were not made to live in isolation. Sadly, many of our veterans feel they need to fight their battles alone. This self-isolation has led to the staggering statistic of more than 20 veterans taking their lives every day. A lot of guys end up drinking, a lot of guys end up losing hope. Someone will go to the VA and they'll try to get, you know, prescription medications to help with PTSD. You know, they'll get pills for anxiety, they'll get pills because they can't sleep, now they'll get pills for depression before they know it. they're taking 12 different medications. And when it's not working out, these guys lose hope, and that's why there's 23 guys a day committing suicide. The mission of Mighty Oaks is to eradicate the veteran suicide epidemic and help our warriors change their legacies. As a result, we've been able to help over 4,000 veterans and first responders by equipping them with the tools they need to live the lives they were created to live. Everything they said just kept hitting me in the heart over and over and over again. It's like all the things that I didn't know that I needed to hear. And uh, I opened my heart to God that week, dude, and like, <laughs> I've been a different person ever since. Our faith-based, peer-to-peer approach has one of the highest success rates of any program available today, offering hope and understanding to those who need it most. We provide our programs and resources, including travel, at no cost to our warriors. I remember talking to a licensed uh, social worker who actually handed me a pamphlet to Mighty Oaks. So I went, and I'm glad I did. By aligning their lives to biblical principles, these men and women are able to lead their families, their communities, and our nation. Our mission is to serve and restore our nation's warriors and families who have endured hardship through their service to America and to help them find new life purpose through hope in Christ. It's your generosity that can make a difference in the lives of the men and women who have fought for our country and our freedoms. Now that they're home, don't let them fight alone. Learn more at MightyOaksPrograms.org.